Hello and uh, welcome to Alternative Design's presentation of the Baby Boomer Retirement Revolution. I'm Tim Harding, Chief Marketing Officer at Alternative Design and uh, welcome aboard. Uh, we're in between product offerings right now. As you know, last uh, week uh, we closed out the July offerings, had a, a very good July. I, you know, my topic last week was <laughs> don't take the summer off and apparently you didn't uh, because business kept flowing. So thank you very much for that. Uh, don't have any product to talk about today, uh, but we'll have next week. Uh, so next week will be the August product launch. Uh, expect some uh, good looking products to be available to you on our platform next month and uh, be happy to introduce them to you. Uh, this coming Wednesday, same time, same place, 11.35 Pacific Time. Uh, as always, if you have questions during the course of the presentation, feel free to type those into the chat box uh, on your uh, control panel at any time, and I'll be happy to respond to uh, any and all questions uh, at the end of the webinar today uh, before we sign off. So uh, today's topic is, is a little bit different. Uh, so I don't anticipate a great new number of questions on the presentation. It's likely stuff you've heard, in, at least in passing, uh, some time ago. Uh, but I just thought I'd uh, remind you, you all of, of where we are uh, in an economic cycle that's important to all of us. Uh, so if you do have questions on uh, today's topic or any other topics, uh, feel free to uh, type those into the chat box and I will respond to them uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, you know, there's no question that uh, boomers are a little bit different. Uh, many of us started off uh, our work in financial services in the senior marketplace, and we were actually dealing with the greatest generation, uh, those people who fought and won World War II and, and made the world safe for democracy, uh, true heroes. Uh, but as you know, if you've been looking at the demographics, uh, the, the greatest generation is, is passing on at uh, kind of an alarming rate if you, if you look at the statistics on the number of World War II veterans that are passing away every single day. Uh, it's a little bit alarming. But uh, as they're passing away, uh, the next big demographic bubble, uh, us baby boomers, because <laughs> I are one, uh, are starting to have uh, an impact on what used to be uh, a different marketplace. The senior marketplace for safe money products uh, still exists, but now it's being taken over by baby boomers in kind of an alarming fashion. And if we don't reorient ourselves uh, to who our clients are, who our prospects are going forward, if we continue to make the same assumptions about baby boomers that we were able to make about the greatest generation, uh, we're going to find ourselves uh, swinging and missing a, a lot more because uh, baby boomers are different. Now, they've been described as a demographic bubble of roughly 78 million of us <laughs> moving through the economy as kind of like the, the, the pig moving through the python kind of thing. In other words, it has an effect on uh, every life stage. Uh, it affects the economy in every life stage. And if you think about it, baby boomers aren't just driving the economy. <laughs> baby boomers are the economy. And those impacts are, are felt you know, far and wide. I mean, you can go back and trace the economic history of the United States and tie it directly to baby boomers from uh, the, the burst of kids. And remember station wagons? <laughs> Haven't seen a station wagon for years, but it used to be uh, everybody was driving a station wagon because us kids were all packed into the back. Used to drive from Hannibal, Missouri out to San Diego, California every summer uh, <laughs> in a big old Pontiac station wagon. Well, as baby boomers got a little bit older and started to get their driver's licenses, we didn't want to drive station wagons anymore. That was a car for, for mom and dad. Instead, we wanted something else, and we had a complete revolution in auto manufacturing in the United States. Muscle cars, because that's what we wanted. We, <laughs> we wanted the Ford Mustangs. We wanted the Camaros, the Dodge Chargers, the GTOs. Uh, and we changed the auto industry just by being a demographic bubble. We went from station wagons to muscle cars, but then we grew up. And, you know, it's hard to put a baby seat in the back of a muscle car. And so, once again, we changed the whole economy. <laughs> we changed the auto industry from manufacturing muscle cars to SUVs because we weren't going to drive 
a station wagon, <laughs> but we still had to cart our kids around to and from soccer games and baseball games and Little League. And so we had to have our own version. And once again, baby boomers transformed the economy. And you can go back and you can look at, at health care. Uh, you can look at electronics. Uh, you can look at restaurants. Any sector of the U.S. economy has been impacted by where that demographic bubble we call baby boomers, those born from 1946 to 1964, all 78 million of us have had an impact on every single facet of the economy, truly. Uh, baby boomers don't just drive the economy, uh, they are the economy. And going forward, that's not going to change. As baby boomers move into our later years, into our, that retirement life stage, so to speak, although I have seen several arguments that say baby boomers don't really have a retirement uh, because it's going to be so different, we're still going to impact everything around us economically. We're going to have a dramatic impact on Social Security, a significant impact on, on Medicare. Uh, we're going to impact the legal industry as, as more and more baby boomers need essentially estate planning uh, for their families. Charity work, medical care. We're going to affect every facet of the economy and we who serve as financial advisors need to be able to recognize those demographic changes and the shift in needs from the greatest generation to the baby boomer generation. Because that moment uh, is now upon us. In fact, it's already passed. Uh, here's an article from October the 15th, 2007. Uh, the very first baby boomer, Kathleen Casey Kirschling of Maryland, became the very first baby boomer to receive Social Security benefits. And of course, uh, that's happening on an hourly rate now as baby boomers move into that retirement stage. As you know, though, there are many different issues facing baby boomers in retirement than those that faced the greatest generation. Uh, the greatest generation really did retire at 65, but they retired with a couple of other things. <laughs> they retired with a probably a very, very good company pension plan to go along with their Social Security benefits. I know my grandfather did. I remember him uh, telling me one time when he visited me out here in San Diego, we were at the uh, Old Town Spaghetti Factory, and uh, we were standing in the lobby waiting to be seated, and he just started chuckling. And I, I said, what's so funny? And he said, saying, yeah, picked up my Social Security check today. And I said, well, okay. And he goes, no. He says, I've never made so much money in my life. They just keep sending these things. He didn't need it. He'd been very frugal his whole life. Uh, he managed his money well. He had assets. He had a pension plan. His Social Security check was just extra money to him. Not so for us baby boomers, because the vast majority of baby boomers are not going to have a company pension plan. Instead, they've got a 401k that's likely invested in the stock market. And they don't know whether they have enough money to survive their lifetime or not. They're just hoping against hope uh, that they put away enough. And they're going to be needing a specialized kind of financial advice uh, that you and I need to be able to provide to them. And again, it's not the same advice that we gave to the greatest generation. The 78 million baby boomers comprise 32% of the population of the United States. But here's the real shocker. Here's the real thing that, that gripped me, because we've always been talking about the uh, transfer of wealth from the greatest generation to the baby boomer generation and how we could capitalize on that and, and, and help people uh, in those circumstances. But as of now, baby boomers now control 77% of the nation's wealth. Not the greatest generation anymore. 77% of the nation's wealth is now in the hands of the baby boomers. And they're currently entering what we used to refer to as the retirement stage of life. But it ain't the greatest generation's retirement. We think of seniors and we think of that classic television commercial about the uh, remote uh, help button. You know, I've fallen and I can't get up. Uh, no, that's not going to be the boomers. The boomers are going to be active. 
They're going to be involved. They may see career changes. Uh, they may participate in charity work. Uh, they're going to continue on past that traditional retirement age of 65. But boomers also face additional problems. One is they're going to live a lot longer. A male who's healthy at age 65 today is likely to live to age 85. That's his current life expectancy. But there's a 50% chance he will live beyond that age of 85, and a 25% chance he'll live beyond the age of 92. Folks, that's almost 30 years of planning for retirement, <laughs> or being in retirement, for which we hope we've planned. Uh, nothing compared to uh, the greatest generation that didn't have uh, this much longevity. And it's worse for females. A uh, female age 65 has a life expectancy now of 88, uh, but a 50% chance that she will live beyond that age of 88, and a 25% chance she'll live beyond the age of 94. A married couple, healthy at age 65, well, life expectancy of at least one of them uh, is 92 years of age, and a 50% chance of living beyond age 92 to as much as age 97. That's what the actuarial tables are telling us today. So the planning for the baby boomer generation significantly different than the planning for the greatest generation. But the reason I'm bringing this message to you is because we need to understand that there has been a major shift. Uh, Raymond James has understood that there is a major shift. Just this week uh, in investment news, uh, saw this particular article. Raymond James wants advisors to focus on retirement planning. Not the senior marketplace, but retirement planning. Who are they referring to? They're referring to those 78 million baby boomers. And what is Raymond James trying to get its financial advisors to reorient themselves to? Well, they announced six different initiatives that they want their advisors to adopt. One, refocusing their questions from money management to priorities in retirement. Using software to enhance goal planning and monitoring. Having financial advisors expand their knowledge so they can educate their clients on life issues associated with age. Expanding the client's network to include professionals beyond financial services. That means strategic alliances with other trusted advisors like CPAs and attorneys. And I've talked about that numerous times in, in past webinars. Setting up clients with social media and a digital presence. It's becoming more and more important. You know, we used to say that the greatest generation really didn't use the technology. They weren't on the Internet. Not so with baby boomers. If we can't keep up with them in the form of social media and a digital presence, uh, we're behind the curve. And then hosting and engaging client events centered around longevity, <laughs> not around how to make more money. So there's an entire broker-dealer organization here refocusing what advisors have traditionally done. And I'm sharing this with you because perhaps we ought to be rethinking our positions and our approach to the marketplace uh, as well. Now, there are some interesting other consequences of baby boomers retiring, and there's some disagreement uh, as to what that really means, especially in the financial services industry. Um, Recently, uh, well, this was actually not that recently, this was two or three years ago, a study came out by the, from the Federal Reserve Board that suggested that as baby boomers reach retirement, they may start selling off their stocks. They're heavily invested in the stock market. They may start pulling that money out as they move from an accumulation stage to a distribution sta stage in their financial life cycle. And as money pours out of the stock market, what does that mean? Uh, for the market itself. You know, the arguments are that that money being pulled out is going to stagnate the market or even drive it down significantly uh, for the foreseeable future while the baby boomers continue to be in that retirement stage. And we're looking at a long-term period here, 20, 30 years, of very little movement in the stock market itself. Now, 
There are counter arguments to this, which I'm not going to go into it at this particular time, but many advisors also feel that the baby boomers aren't really going to have that big an impact on the stock market because instead of withdrawing money from the stock market, their focus is simply going to shift, shift from accumulation and high returns to capital preservation. Uh, you know and I know as we reach retirement age, uh, the risk of losing money uh, becomes more and more <laughs> uh, deadly uh, to a portfolio because we have less and less time uh, to make it up. But boomers are caught in that dilemma of preserving capital, but at the same time looking at maybe 20 to 30 years uh, that that money has to support them. So they've got really good swords <laughs> crossed uh, for two different purposes here. We have to find a middle road. Now what this means is as financial advisors today and dealing with baby boomers, we may be using similar tools uh, to what we used with the greatest generation, uh, but there are now different rules to apply than the ones we did when we were in the senior marketplace. You know, these folks here are having a great game of bridge. They do this every week. They get together. Uh, they have a great time uh, playing cards every single week. Uh, they know the rules. They know what to expect when they walk in. They're anticipating having a very good time, and they love playing cards. But if they walk in on this card game here with the same expectations and trying to play by the same rules that they play that bridge game with, uh, the consequences could be rather dire. You see, the, it's all cards, you know, same tools, uh, but different rules now. Well, here at Alternative Design, we offer a product on our platform that I think is perfectly matched for the baby boomer deliver, uh, dilemma of needing to preserve capital while still keeping up with inflation and still growing the assets and generating enough growth uh, to make it worthwhile. And that is, of course, the Goldman Sachs Momentum Builder product. And <clears throat> we'll spend more time talking about it uh, next week in the product launch. Uh, I've already spent a, a fair amount of time talking about it uh, in the past couple of months because I think it is one of the most innovative uh, and powerful products uh, that we've ever put on our platform. It is, of course, a multi-asset product, uh, meaning it doesn't link to just one asset class like stocks or commodities or even bonds. It instead is linked to an index that reflects movement in seven different asset classes. Seven different asset classes. So regardless of the economy, based on purely on math, on modern portfolio theory and momentum theory, uh, this index reallocates itself within very strict rules uh, across seven different asset classes, both national and international. It is a marvelous, marvelous opportunity uh, to talk to baby boomers who are used to seeing mutual funds in their 401k portfolios. Can, they can now see a product diversified across seven different asset classes with no cap, with unlimited upside potential, but that is FDIC insured and principal protected and guaranteed. Folks, this is a huge, huge step forward for baby boomers, a way to do what they really need to do, which is switch from asset accumulation to asset preservation, but at the same time uh, not give in to inflation, however moderate. Uh, and you can see by this graph, which I've shared with you in the past, uh, the red line there is the Goldman Sachs uh, multi-asset product, and you can see it is all weather. And I always like to point out how little it went down from 2007 through 2010. A very small dip there compared to virtually every other asset class. class. Absolutely spectacular product. Uh, we expect to have it back on our platform uh, for the month of August. And if it were me, if I were you, <laughs> I would tear this product apart, know it backwards and forwards, uh, and then use it as my spearhead. Uh, this product, FDIC insured, multi-asset, uh, is going to get you in front of a lot of prospects and it's going to get you a lot of sales. And of course, we all know uh, that once you're sitting in front of a baby boomer, the other need uh, that they have in retirement uh, is income. 
and that can very easily lead to an additional uh, indexed annuity sale uh, and lots of opportunities there. So uh, with that, I'll check and see if we have uh, any questions at this point. <clears throat> I don't think we do currently. Uh, if you have any questions uh, here, I'll be happy to respond to that. Uh, like I said, next week I'll be back same time, same place, 1135 uh, Pacific time on Wednesday. It will be the August product launch, and we will be going through the new offerings for the month of August. Uh, Jim asks, what is the surrender period for the Goldman Sachs Momentum B uh, Builder? Uh, Jim, there is no surrender period, but it is a seven-year product, a seven-year maturity product, uh, if that uh, is, uh, is the question that you're really directing. Okay, at this point, uh, I don't see uh, any other questions. I want to thank you once again for spending some time with me. Uh, I wanted, was hoping just to get you refocused on changes in the dynamics of the marketplace that we're working in, and I thank you for joining us. Uh, until next week when we do the product launch, have a great week. We'll talk to you then.